when they went to people, when they got there, they only baptized them in one name. And after baptizing them, the Holy Spirit came upon those people. So the Holy Spirit was never a person. The Holy Spirit was never a human being. But the Spirit of Truth was always a human being. Just like the Messiah was always a human being, just like the Messiah was always Christ. Many people have asked themselves the question of whether Jesus Christ, when he said that the Holy Spirit will come after he leaves, that the Comforter will come after he leaves, was he talking about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or was he talking about the mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus being the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? Is the Holy Spirit a man or is the Holy Spirit merely a spirit that can dwell in any other person? We are answering that question today. How are you guys doing? I'm glad that you are here. Hit the subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that bell notification. But without further ado, let's not waste any more time. Let's go straight into it, y'all. Let's go. Let's get it. He says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak from himself. But what things shall he hear, that shall he speak, and he shall declare unto you the things that are to come. He shall glorify me. Eight masculine pronouns in one verse. I say, it ill befits a ghost. You agree? That is a man, a man, a man, a man. Eight times. There is not another verse in the whole Bible with eight masculine pronouns. That's the first question that comes up, is the fact that he is a pronoun for a person, is a pronoun for an animal species. Let me not say specifically a human being, but for an animal species, right? He or she, those are pronouns for well-alive human beings and well-alive animals. But when it comes to it, it is a thing. It's, it's something, whether tangible or not, but it, it's an it. So when he says he, it brings a question of whether he was speaking about a real person or not. And other people might say when he said he, he was speaking about Paul. Because Paul is essentially the founder of Christianity. Paul is essentially the one who came up with the structure of the church. Essentially, the Christian church we have it right now, it is based on Paul's teaching. Others say and others believe he was speaking about Paul. But in the Islamic religion, as we see, they think he's speaking about, or they know, they believe, he's speaking about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But let's continue and hear what Mr. Ahmed did at the say. Or eight feminine gender, or eight neuter genders. There isn't. This is a unique verse for a unique personality, Muhammad. Man, 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 not a ghost, not a spook. But we are told he's a spirit. Is Muhammad the spirit? I say yes. That's what your Bible says. You see, every time the word spirit is used in your Bible, I'm telling the Christian, it doesn't stand for the Holy Ghost. Because in the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, it, we are told that seven spirits of God went out into the world. I say, you believe in seven Holy Ghosts? He says, no, there's only one Holy Ghost. I say, look, it's seven spirits. It means should be seven Holy Ghosts. No, spirit doesn't stand for Holy Ghost every time. Then in the same John, the same John, in the first epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 4, he says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. So false spirit is a false, false prophet, is a false spirit, true prophet is a true spirit. Yeah, what he's saying there is important. You, you must remember, there are many kinds of spirits in the world. There are different types of spirits in the world. But you must have the discernment spirit to discern whether the spirit is of God or whether the spirit is not of God. Right? Because demons are also spirits, angels are also spirits. And there's a scripture where Paul says, that nobody must come and change the gospel. They must not come and teach things that we did not teach as the disciples of Jesus Christ, as the apostles of Jesus Christ. 
whether it be an angel whether it be a demon whether it be principalities and powers nobody must change how the structure of believing in god is now we must think about that for a moment because right now the world and the religions that we have in the world are governed by different spirits by different spirits in all kinds of ways in all kinds of methods of worshiping god and all kinds of worshiping allah if i put it like that so you must become very very careful whether you think you are safe in the religion that you are in or whether you think you are not safe in the religion that you're in because i can tell you right now one religion has the truth and the other does not have, have the full truth but let's not get into that right now let's continue with the video y'all same john is using spirit for a prophet don't believe every spirit means don't believe in every prophet the spirit it says that confesseth that jesus is the christ is of god it means the prophet that says that jesus is the christ is the messiah the messiah is from allah that's what john says i said well find out whether this spirit this prophet muhammad does say that jesus is the christ open surah ali imran chapter 3 verse 45 it says وَإِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَا مَرْيَمُ So behold, the angel said, O Mary, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبَشِّرُكِ بِكَلِمَةٍ مِّنْهُ That Allah gives you glad tidings of a word from him. إِسْمُهُ الْمَسِيحِ His name will be the Messiah, translated Christ. Muhammad said, is he the Christ? Yes, that's what every Muslim believes. On the testification of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, 1,000 million Muslims of the world, they believe that Jesus is the Christ. He says, the spirit that confesses, the prophet that says that Jesus is the Christ is of God. Why don't you apply this to Muhammad? And says, St. John, in the Gospel of St. John, he says, he says, he that is born of spirit is spirit, and he that is born of the flesh is flesh. So do spirits beget? Do they prohibit? He says, no. Then how can you be born of spirit? No. In, what it means there is that who is spiritually inclined is spiritual. Who is materialistically inclined is flesh. What brought you here tonight? Some kind of gift that you were expecting from d -Dad? You know, he's going to give you some sweet meat. What? Some chocolate? Is that what brought you here? If that was the case, and suppose I give it out to you, you are materialistically inclined. Material things brought you here. So you are a materialist. In the language of the Bible, you are fleshy, you are of the flesh. Materialist. If it was spiritual consideration, motivation that brought you here, then you are spiritual, you are a spirit, though you are not a spirit, you are solid, flesh and bones. But you are spiritually inclined. You are spiritual. This, the gospel language, say he that is born, means the thing that motivates you, that brings you up into being. If it is spirit, spiritually then you are a spirit. And if you are fleshly, you are flesh. Material, you are flesh. It doesn't mean a Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit every time the word spirit is used. So Jesus says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. So this spirit, this Holy Ghost, if it's a Holy Ghost, every church and denomination claims it. Everybody seems to be in touch. You know, at your beck and call, you press the button and it's there. You ask the Jehovah's Witnesses. He says, yes, we have it. Ask the Roman Catholics. They got it. Ask Brother Jimmy Swaggart. He says, he's got it. Everybody has it. All those cults that he mentions in his books. You know what's, what's alarming about what he's saying right now about the Holy Spirit? is the fact that every believer in every church, every denomination believes that they have the Holy Spirit. They believe that they have the Holy Ghost. But that does not make any sense. If you think about it. Jesus Christ, when he was baptized in the river Jordan, the Holy Spirit came upon him as a dove, right? A white, beautiful, clean dove, blameless dove, blemishless dove, because God works in that way. He loves cleanliness. But many of our churches, we are unclean, and many of our churches, we are filled with things that really makes us have blemishes before God. And we tend to use the thing of grace the system of saying grace uh, we are now saved by grace Jesus Christ's blood has cleansed us and all that but you can walk into certain churches and you can feel that the Holy Spirit is not here the Holy Ghost is not here the lifestyle in this church does not apply 
to the lifestyle in which Jesus Christ subscribed to and Jesus Christ, I don't know, succumbed to. The old church days, the old churches subscribed to. You can feel that it's cold in here. There is no movement of the spirit. It's, it's just dull. It's just dark and there's nothing happening. But the people there will tell you that the Holy Spirit is in their midst. We all believe that in our different churches, but that cannot be true. It, it just can't be true. With so many spirits in the world and you believe that the Holy Spirit is there all the time, while there's other people who've been doing bad deeds in the church, people who are even singing on the microphone or even preaching on the pulpit, having other spirits themselves. And you believe that. Let's continue though. Among these 30 books, there's one on cults. You read them, he says, look, the, every cultist says he's got the spirit. Who? The Holy Ghost. Everybody's got it. And they're all going in different directions. So one spirit taking you all into opposite directions from God? No. As Brother Swagat said yesterday, either we are both right or we, are, we can both be wrong. You both can be right. So, you have a thousand sects and denomination among the whites of South Africa, among the whites, and 3,000 among the blacks. In America, I was given to understand that you've got 40 different Baptist churches. Each and every one has got the Holy Ghost, the Spirit, and they're all going in different directions. Is it from God? Yeah, that's actually true. In South Africa, there's like many beliefs, many different denominations. It's thousands and thousands of denominations in South Africa and they are all different and they all believe they are right. Each and every one of them believes they are right, they have the proper doctrine and they are following the truth. But how is that possible? How can there be thousands of denominations believing different things, practicing different practices and we yet believe that we all have the truth and we are all going to the same place? It's, it's unimaginable. Can it be from God? All going in different directions. All say they are Baptists and everyone has got the Holy Ghost. So I said, you see, this, you haven't got the solution to the problems. Answers. Jesus, I have yet many things to say unto you. Many. Many in English is more than one. At least you understand that English. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. All is also more than one. I'm asking my Christian brethren for the past 40 years. I don't want many solutions. Give me one. That the Holy Ghost gave you in 2,000 years. One. Something that Jesus Christ had not already told you in so many different words. One. Any church, any denomination, any cult, bring me one new thing that the Holy Ghost gave you. And it's not forthcoming. One! I don't want many. Jesus says, ye cannot bear them now. The reason why he didn't give is not because he didn't have it. He had the solution to the problems of mankind. Till doomsday, God gave it to him. But the people were not fit to receive them. That's what he's saying. He's pleading with us. Ye cannot bear them now means you haven't got that capacity. And the truth of that statement is writ large in the Bible. Again and again, Jesus Christ. He tells his disciples, ye of little faith, you got no iman. You have no faith. Little faith, if whatever you have is little, tiny. Ye of little faith, ye of little faith. How many times? Again and again. And he explains to them spiritual truths as if he's explaining to little children and they can't understand what he's talking about. So he says, are you even yet without understanding? Yet? And when he's provoked further, he says, O oh, faithless and perverse generation. This is what he's calling his disciples. Not the Jews. The generality of Jews, he called them, you generation of wipers, you whited sepulchres, you wicked and adulterous generation, and on and on. But no, now he's describing his disciples, his own disciples, his chosen ones. He said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I be with you? I said, if Jesus was a Japanese instead of a Jew, he would have committed that honorable harakiri, suicide. But as a Jew, he couldn't afford to do that. You know, he loved life dearly. He loved life dearly. 
So he says, when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. I said, that spirit of truth is Muhammad. Muhammad is the prophet. We say, As-Sadiq al wadul I mean, the prophet who is faithful, truthful, prophet, As-Sadiq al wadul I the truthful, the faithful, he is the prophet of truth. Spirit of truth is the prophet of truth, Muhammad. And he guided mankind into all truth, all your problems. Bring them, bring them, bring them. It's clear. It's, it's just clear as day. The Prophet Muhammad is not the Holy Spirit. Let's let's clear that out. Let's clear that out the way, right? The Prophet Muhammad is not the Holy Spirit. The Prophet Muhammad is not the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit on itself, and the Prophet Muhammad is the Spirit of Truth. He is the Spirit of Truth. When he has come, he will reveal the things in which I cannot reveal right now because he cannot bear them now, as Jesus Christ has said. So now we must differentiate between the spirit of truth and the Holy Spirit. Peter, Paul, all of these disciples, John, all of them, when they went out into the world to baptize people, to teach people what Jesus taught, Jesus told them, Go baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But they never did that. When they went to people, when they got there, they only baptized them in one name. And after baptizing them, the Holy Spirit came upon those people. So the Holy Spirit was never a person. The Holy Spirit was never a human being. But the Spirit of Truth was always a human being. Just like the Messiah was always a human being. Just like the Messiah was always Christ. Christ is the Messiah. Christ is not the Holy Spirit. Christ is Jesus, the human being. So you must be, begin to be able to separate these things. As Jesus Christ also came and said, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The Father being God himself, the one in the heavens, whom Jesus Christ worshipped. The Son being Jesus, which was sent, which is the Christ. And the Holy Spirit being the Holy Spirit. The one who comes after Jesus Christ, who was that? The Prophet Muhammad, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This thing is a process. That's how God works. He works in processes. He works in, you know, processes that make sense. He, he works in a sequence. First came John, right? First came John. After John came, he said, there's one who cometh after me whose souls I cannot untie, right? Who came after him? Jesus Christ. Jesus came as a messenger as well. After he came, what did he say? The same thing. That somebody else will come. And he will say things that supersede the things I'm going to say to you right now. Because you cannot bear them now. They do not apply to you. Who came after Jesus Christ? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's all in a sequence. Now for us as Christians to try and speak of the Trinity most of the time. And to try and make these things one thing. It makes no sense. It really makes no sense. It doesn't make any, any, any kind of sense. Let me make you another example. If right now we say that God is three in one, God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as Christians, right? What about when uh, there, were, there was a war in heaven? What about when there was a war in heaven? Michael and his angels were fighting against the dragon, were fighting against the devil, were fighting against Satan, were fighting against Lucifer, right? What happened there? Was Michael God or was Michael just another archangel of God? Now you must differentiate. You must talk about that as well. What about Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego when they were in the fire? Who was there with them? There was a fourth man in the fire. Was that God or was that another angel? The Christians don't talk about that. And we must talk about that because if we say God is only restricted into these three, this three in one, then we are missing the point. Who walked with Adam in the garden? Who walked with him? Because that man was definitely in a body. He was definitely in a body, right? As we read, it means he was in a body. So who was that? Was that Jesus or was that a spirit? We must find a level of understanding as far as Christians go. We must really, really do some research on our religion. We must really, really do some reading on other religions as well. Read the Quran read the Torah, read everything and try and make everything make sense because right now 
we are lost as Christians. But I'm going to cut the video right there, you guys. Thank you for watching. Remember to hit the like button. Remember to hit the subscribe button. And remember to catch us every day as we post new videos every day. But thank you for watching. Peace. Love you.